Affinity Photo features a set of live masks that allow you to mask layer content based on luminosity, hue, and frequency. In this video, I'll show you how to use hue range masks. First of all, I'm going to add a Shadows Highlights adjustment layer. This adjustment layer version of Shadows and Highlights is not for recovery purposes, but rather for creatively compressing or expanding these tonal ranges. I'm going to bring the highlights all the way up and reduce shadows to create a very strong contrast between them. Now I'm going to mask this adjustment to a specific hue range. To achieve this, I'll go to Layer, New Live Mask Layer, Hue Range. Now live masks behave differently depending on whether they're added to adjustments and filters or actual content layers, such as pixel and image layers. When added to content layers, they will mask based on that content, but when added to non-content layers, they will mask based on the content underneath that layer. So in this case, the hue range mask is working off the background layer beneath the shadows highlights adjustment layer. On the hue range mask dialog here, I can check preview to see a grayscale representation of what this mask is doing. I'll click drag between the two middle nodes. And this lets me move the targeted hue range around the color wheel. Click dragging between the two groups of nodes will expand or contract the in and out points of the range. And I can also click drag on individual nodes to completely customize the range of tones that are being masked. Let's look at some of the options on the dialog. Invert output is useful for achieving a quick inversion of the current mask. These two options let you control the in and out ramping between the two sets of nodes. If I click the in ramp icon, then click drag on the graph to create a node and drag it around, this allows me to control the balance of the tones covered by the two in range nodes. This will have more of an effect if the two nodes are wider apart. The same principle applies to the out range ramp. Currently, Manipulating this graph does not appear to be doing much because the nodes are quite close together. If they are further apart, however, the graph can be used to further control this balance. Preset profiles are also provided that you can quickly choose from. The blur radius slider down here adds a Gaussian blur which softens the edge transitions between white and black, or rather opaque and transparent areas. I'll use this shortly to improve the masking result. For now, I'll click Reset up here and disable the mask preview. Now, I can click Picker here to switch to a Picker tool that lets me single click to determine the initial hue range I want to mask. I'll click on the sky up here which will instantly move the hue range around to the blues, magentas, and cyans. Clicking on the pumpkin will predominantly target the reds and dramatically change the look of the image. I'm going to target the sky tones again, as I want to create this strong contrast effect and really brighten the star detail and moonlight bouncing off the side of the mountain here. Now I'm also going to use the blurring option to smooth out the transition on the edges of the pumpkin here. As I bring the slider up, we can see a huge difference here. The mask edges become less abrupt and much smoother. I'll quickly show you one more example of how the live hue range mask can speed up the masking process. On this render, I want to change the color of the bike frame, but going in and creating a mask manually could be time consuming. Instead, I'll add a recolor adjustment and this defaults to a red hue, which is fine for now. I'll reduce the saturation, then I'll add a live hue range mask to this recolor adjustment. I'll move the nodes around to the cyan and blue range, which successfully masks the color range I want to modify. However, it's also masking some of the blue tones in the sky here, which I don't want. Fortunately, live masks behave like regular mask layers, which means we can easily paint on them as well. So, I can select the paintbrush tool, 
Then on the brushes panel, I'll switch to the masking category and I'll choose a large, soft round brush. Then I'll make sure I'm set to black and paint onto that area of sky to subtract it from the mask. I can then click on the recolor adjustment thumbnail to open the settings dialog and I can move the hue and saturation sliders to experiment with different colors for the bike frame. And there we go, a couple of examples showing you how to use live hue range masks in Affinity Photo. Thank you for watching.